Hello, are you ready to play ball with Buck? We're going to show you some hit and good painting today. I have started this canvas a little bit, but I saved some so you would see what I uh, have been doing and am going to do. It's a little bit different. I have presented to you before tinted canvases. I've presented to you canvases done on Magic White. How about the combination? Tinted Magic White. Let me pick up some paint on the way up to the canvas. I have what I call my Tinted Magic White. It's two parts thalo green, two parts cadmium yellow, one part black. After I get that dark mixture, and then I add it into eight parts of white. So I'd have one part of the dark and eight of the white. After I have that mixed, you still will go ahead, that's just with regular white, and then I'll take and put uh, Magic White in it, so it's about half parts of Magic White, half part of the color. And see, this is uh, the white canvas, and this is how it looks as it's been spread over the drawing. And then I'll spread just a little bit more. When you do this, you uh, push it around, and then you might make sure that you don't have too much paint on because you're still with that old magic white principle of just a little fingerprint showing. I don't care if it has a little bit of uh, holidays on it where you got a, a couple little spots of white showing, but anyway, we have a grand day ahead of us. This is going to be a nine inning game. No extra innings here, but I want to relate a little bit of baseball analogy as we go ahead. Let's go down to the canvas, uh, excuse me, the palette, and we'll pick up some water color. This is dark water, too black two thalo blue, one thalo green, and then one half part white. So we've told you the exact amount of white too. So it, you don't see much of the white. It just softens it slightly. This comes up with a bunny brush and we're putting this into the lower wave and I can see a pencil line there. We'll put this on, blend around, and of course you're expecting the paint to blend in softly with the TMW to the Tinted Magic White. We'll go ahead and use a little bit of this, but much less of it as we go back to the next wave. We'll go back over in here, put some on, and then we'll go a little bit over in there. Just soften a little bit. I'll place it, and then we'll blend it. Now here's a little bit in there, and then succeedingly, as we go back further, wipe a little bit so you don't use quite as much paint as we go back to the back wave. And then let's even take some of this and go back a little further just kind of dust off, clean the brush, but you're putting a semblance of where the water ends, where the horizon is. Go across, over to here, and because of what we're showing today, this uh, power C, we're going to have kind of a uh, indistinct horizon, and it doesn't have to be quite ruler straight. Do we need any more of this? Yes, over in here. This is powerful. This is a great scene. It has uh, the movement of the big water, and it has the water in front going a couple, three different directions. It's almost like base runners. Some going to first, some going to third, and sometimes both at third. You've heard that story, haven't you? You know, another nice thing from the baseball, well, let, let's see, let's see if we want to put any more of this on first. Uh, we'll put a little bit more on there. I'll come to the baseball in just a minute, but let's go ahead and stay with the painting for a while. That's probably why you're here, right? Let's blend what we have up there. Now, I've cleaned the bunny brush just with uh, some odorless thinner, and we'll take and squeeze it, and then soften, soften what's there. Each one of these will be softened, which will help it very well. Now I'm going to take one other color, which will go for the water, and when you do this, you're using part of what you previously had. So it is four parts white, one part of the darker water, and one half cadmium yellow. See, that almost has a little bit of a kind of a greenish tint to it. So we'll push this around, and this will go around places that we uh, haven't put the other water, uh, the other dark water, in other words. See, this will be the little openings in the foam patterns. Push around like that. It, it makes it where it's more the flat water, so there isn't quite as much shadow in it as there is in the previous one. And we'll push this around in here. This uh, priming of the canvas helps in two ways. It's very nice to blend into, it's very soft, and then the other thing is you have some of the related colors that are already there, so that helps, doesn't it? Okay, now let's uh, go up to the sky. The sky, we have such a great start because we already have that tinted magic white up there. Now we're going to come with a little bit of, uh, well, let's see, should we go, yes, yeah, so let's go with yellow ochre and white, just yellow ochre and white, and I'll use again 
the uh, bunny brush. Do you want to change your mind, Buck? Yes, I'll change my mind. Let's go with the fan brush. Fan brush, the reason for going with the fan brush, we can get a lot of accidental looks. See, I'll just spot this on, and this one as well will just stay for a while. We'll consider blending later. Anytime you put paint on and let it set for a while, you have a little more control over it because it, it won't uh, soften away quite as much if you let it set for a while. I think I'll get there eventually, won't I? Okay, now let's uh, put a little foam color on. And then what we're doing is kind of, I hope you don't feel it's rushing, but we're putting on things that we'll work with. We want to sort of cover what's there. So I'll choose to again use a fan brush. Four alizarin crimson, one ivory black, one thalo blue, and then that's put into white. Anyway, the uh, thing about the baseball is that whenever you was playing baseball, you would always be conscious, is there a professional major league scout in the stands tonight? And if you're playing in the minor leagues and you uh, hear that there's a scout in the stands, oh my gosh, you walk straighter and you hustle. He may not have come to look at you. Maybe he's looking at the other pitcher or one of your teammates. But nevertheless, you're going to do the best you can. Well, the same thing today. You are there as a scout. I'm going to do my very best to impress you, right? But I'll tell you one little comparison that I like. In baseball, you don't necessarily always play a home game. But when you're doing the television show, it's always a home game. And what I mean by that, I feel you're my fans out there. You're for me. Well, there's going to be a couple that say, boo, Paulson, but the rest of you will drown him out, won't you? Okay, let's push this around. And you notice as I'm pushing this around, I don't completely fill in the wave. See, I have the wave to there. I don't completely fill that in so that when I put the highlight on, it will go on to the dry canvas. We have another part of the wave down here, and that's going to be very helpful to establish again the bottom edge of the foam, the bottom edge. Look at the character along there. See, that's what you want. You have the grace, but you also have the character on the edge. Edges. And that same thing has happened up here. The character is along there. Okay, let's go ahead and put just a little bit of paint down below. It'll be a quantity, and it will just sit there, and you think, what's going to happen? This is yellow ochre and white. We come with a palette knife. I'll scoop in Minnesota snowplow. Boom, the road's clear. Okay, let's put this down in the area that we have a lot of flat moving foam. Now I'm not blending this, I'm just putting on quantity. Take a little bit more, same stroke, boom, right up there. And let's put some over in here too. Okay, when I come to put the foam on the big wave, I'll use a mop brush and uh, we'll do a little bit of character with this. Now, just when you fill it up, you fill it up pretty good. This is all dry brush because we have a lot of wetness up on the canvas from the tinted magic white. When you place this on, it's a little bit more character in mind. See, the knife just puts sharpness on, but this has a little bit of arch feelings on it. A little bit of splash will come later, but right now you're placing it where you want it. That'll be good there. We need some over in this area. This area, a little bit right next to the rock. And of course, you don't see the rock yet. A little bit on the edge there. Okay, let's see. We have enough paint there. We'll continue with it. Just a couple little places. We kind of play around and just put little flecks of light. Just to like this, okay? Let's go ahead and do some blending on this with the bunny brush. And when I say that, we'll start right up in the sky where we have our yellow ochre and white. We'll just go crossways a little bit towards a, uh, an X, back and forth like that. Sometimes I'll go diagonally, vertically, horizontally. What's the other terms? Spherically. Okay, we blend this and uh, that that one has to impact against the wave. We want a good impact there so that you feel like this wave stands out from the sky. So that's why we have the impact there. If that's not quite enough, I'll take just a little bit more. I ran quickly. It was the same thing, yellow ochre and white, and push it right against there. I'll let this come down across the water just a little bit because you're really playing for the effect of uh, distance and separating the two, the foam and the sky. 
As we come down, let's go ahead with the big wave and we'll blend a little bit here. And when I do this, I have the bunny brush now. Remember, we put the paint on with a fan brush, but we're going to blend with the bunny brush because it's much, oh, excuse me, I put it on with a mop brush. But we'll just blend this down. Just pull it directionally thinking towards the right, curve towards the right. It has movement and you have the big round feeling of that masterful full wave coming in there. You know, I was thinking about uh, baseball. As a baseball batter, you better be successful at least 30% of the time. My goodness, 30% of the time? That means you don't have to succeed 70% of the time. That's amazing. Why, well, as a pitcher, we had to do better than that. We had to do better than 50%. As an artist, 100%. No, what happens, one thing about art, if you make a failure, or what you think is a failure, you can just throw it out or you can start over. Wouldn't it be nice to have a, where you pitch a baseball game, you say, I don't like the way I pitched today. I want to do it again. Good. Gosh, what a neat thing. So there, there are some comparisons. There are some advantages in baseball. There's some advantages in art, isn't there? Oh, great. I think I'll stay in art as an artist. Isn't it? Now, what, let me point out what's happening here. Besides blending down to soften, and you get a feeling almost like clouds, so it has a feeling of form. You splash up a little bit here and there to soften that edge, but you save some character too. So it, it's a combination of some softness, some sharpness. Lost and found edges is another way of saying it. And that's really what's happening there. Now let, let's go down just a little bit further into this dark so that we get rid of having any even line across there. Now I'll further fan the uh, dark shadow color of the wave, blend it down, soften a little bit there, and then let's come down to this area. And this is really repeating what was done up above. Notice how you're pulling down with the corner of the brush. Although I'm not brushing it as I did on the larger area, smaller area I still have in mind the way the water, the direction the water is running, and then you splash up just a little bit. Let's pull this down. We have shown running water inside that wave by the dark being there. Now this one splashes up gently. And then let's go ahead with this one just a little bit there, splash back like that. Let's go ahead and go to something else. I'll still leave this sitting there. What I'd like to do now would be to come down and pick up a different brush. I'll have the Twiggy brush and I'm going to load up with some thinner this is my foam color. Remember the foam that we put on for the big splash up foam? Look how I juice that up and I'm going to make some real nice little foam patterns. Let's come up to the foam patterns. What you will note on this ocean painting, you have some foam coming this way, some foam patterns. Now let me just tell a little bit about doing these. See, a touch gently, flatten. Doesn't that look like a three? Flatten out, make a little large ones. They're all flowing the same way. You want variety, so if these look too much the same, these two, then I'll come over just and add a little, another one there. Okay, notice something on this wave, something that we've preached in a different way on every other ocean. But on this one, you have the foam coming this way. On, on this part, it's going to be just kind of flat. Up here, it's just the opposite way. Down below, it's from right to left, and from here, it's from left to right. So let's put a couple up here. And, and that can happen in an ocean. It depends on what's causing it. it it's pretty much this way. Let me, let me tell you what I'm really saying as I go back down to the lower uh, wave. This whole wave, I'll be having the foam traveling the same direction. And then a, another wave can have it whatever way. It's just consistent within the wave itself. And even that, there could be a reason why it would change if it's hitting against a rock or something like that. Okay, this foam pattern will, will go this way too. And the thing about this is you do a lot of wiggle, wiggle, wiggle with the brush and then uh, lightly touch it, flatten it where the foam needs to be larger. And you're always conscious of the space where you do not put any foam. Do you have enough empty places uh, do they have enough, is there enough variety in them? If they start looking the same size, same shapes, well then you'd say, well, maybe those two are the same size, same shapes. Let's go ahead and add a little bit more in there. 
We, over here we have uh, foam also coming this way. We have foam coming in here and next to the big wave. We have some over here to do, just a little bit in there. I think what I'll do now um, is just stop for a minute because I think I've shown you on foam patterns. Let's go ahead and put in some rock color. This is taking a flat badger brush and I have rock color which is uh, three parts burnt umber and one part ivory black. When I put this on, I'll put it on sort of strong like and it will be against that light area which is very nice and then it becomes a support for that big strong powerful wave that's uh, above it. And as I push this on, I don't mind a little bit of it mixing in so you have some softening by mixing in the tinted magic white. A little bit of rock there, I think I'll make that one a little darker. And let's go over to the side. Now you realize when a baseball scout comes to a game, they're expected to make a report and send it back to the major league uh, team and then the major league team will uh, respond. It might be a case where the, the guy says, oh gee, he had tremendous pitching down there. You have to get this player. Take a look at him. Well, you're, you're expected to. You're going to be sending a report. In other words, you're going to write and say, Buck, I like what you did. Knew more of it. Or you're going to make suggestions. Wouldn't it be neat if people could suggest, I suggest you throw a better curve? <laughs> they tell some of those batters that. Get that junk out of here. All right, now on the places that we've put the rock, we'll decide first to wipe a little bit where the highlight will go. So we're wiping just a little bit, and this will give a slight uh, color in itself, a little bit of a stained look, which is pleasing. And then we'll go ahead with some color that I have mixed up here. This is two yellow, two yellow ochre, two white, and one alizarin crimson. I'm using the same brush. And we're going to go up and we'll sort of slant, lightly slant these, lightly touch and lightly slant. A little bit on each of these. We'll push some over here. I think what I'll do is run down to the palette, mix just a little uh, white with that. So we're cutting this one in half. It has um, twice as much white as the other one did. That'll be better because we want that rock to be part of the path of going through the painting, don't we? See, now you're part of the team, aren't you? I've asked you a question, and I expect an answer. On the rocks, uh, this one I will go ahead and blend out too. After we have the color on the rocks, of course we want them to feel like um, there's been a wave on them before, don't we? So, we'll take a little bit of our foam color and just start dropping this off. Okay, we'll just put this on, let it come down, and as, it, as it's below, it does feel like it's a foam line next to the rock. Okay, there we are. Blending is the difference between mediocrity and quality. I really believe that. So if you will watch your blending, and when I say that, both do blending and, and kind of gauge the amount that you do. Let me suggest this, at least with the foam patterns. When I come up to blend, Remember I blend the sky and I kind of went like that. I need to have the same thought in mind when I do the sky, but, and I didn't tell you about it, but now I'll tell you about it. When we do the foam patterns, it's not just direction, but it's the amount of pressure. We might say the amount of softness. You start out with as light a pressure as you can, anticipating that a small amount will be enough. And then if it takes more, then you push harder. This way you're going to be able to control and save the uh, uh, area that you're blending. I want to save the foam pattern so I go very gently with this. Now you notice as you blend the uh, foam patterns, the thing about them that's just a little bit different than the sky of course is we put medium in or even thinner in with them and blend them. So you're going to have sometimes a little bit of uh, paint will streak off. Well, that's fine. That's the nature of foam patterns. They have that kind of frothy, I will follow you feeling. I love that about foam patterns. Ooh, how pretty they are. Okay, now let's go ahead and we'll put on, uh, yeah, we'll put on the light foam patterns. 
And what I mean by that is we've put on some strong light in the lower foam, but now we'll come with some of the uh, individual little loose characters with the twiggy brush again. So we'll blend these around, excuse me, we'll draw these around and then we'll do some blending with them too. This is so much uh, a part of seascapes is the previous wave foam patterns. And of course these will tie in to the large light that we put on with the knife. We can put this on to represent little uh, peaks over here, just a little ripples happening too, and that, that's very helpful for uh, finding an edge of the wave as it continues. All this is to be blended. Isn't it nice? You know, if, if you compare this with a ball game, of course, uh, ball players like to say, well, we're going to beat them, we're going to beat them by 30 points. Well, that's nice. And sometimes they tell players, oh, keep your mouth shut, don't go say what we're going to do. Let's just go out there and do our work. Well, with art, you can say what you're going to do. I'm going to put some foam patterns in here. See, because we're all together. We get the home team saying, do it, Buck, do it. Let me see you do it. Okay, and then you go in here like this. And what else do we need to do? Let's put just a few over in the side. Partly for the reason that I suggested earlier, that you're putting just a little bit of the top of some of these peaks, some of these little swells. So that will be very helpful to state where those are. Now we'll come back out in the distance, and we might put just a little bit of a wave there, and then you're, it's kind of a gradual go, uh, trip back to the sky, and I think that's quite helpful. I'm going to go ahead and put uh, one more foam pattern in with the light one, and watch where I put this. This is in the big wave. See all that shadow foam? But you have just a little bit of a foam pattern coming down across there, and that's just a nice detail because it does say, follow me, as you go right through this way, you're picked up by the rocks, you come around to the clouds, the big wave, and then back to the heavy water, of heavy, heavy foam there. So there's nice movement through the painting, isn't there? When you talk about movement, I'm referring to composition. How do I go through the painting? And then you have, of course, the big power and movement inside. Now I've picked up a bunny brush. I'm going to do softening with this, so we'll just kind of touch a little bit just kind of knocking down the big chunks slightly. And then I'll take and pull just a little bit with this. Okay, let's take the same brush, push around slightly. See, so you're spreading out some of this big paint a little bit. It ties in to the little twiggy foam patterns that you put on earlier. Now we'll blend some of this from behind, push this down this way, over this way. And then if you have a line such as this, and it feels too sharp along there, just pull a little bit down through. It breaks the line. Soften in here, soften in there, and then let's go back over what we've done just a little bit uh, before. We'll just touch it slightly. Soften here, push up a little there. See, each time now it's more gently done. Oh, you know, this wave could use something. To help a feeling of movement within the wave, let's pick up a little bit of this uh, color that we put on the uh, lower flat water, and we'll come with this and put just a little bit of feeling of direction of the movement, the water within the wave. Now when you put that on, if that's uh, blending enough by itself, fine. If it doesn't, you may have to, and I'll just do it so you can see, put a little bit of the light color on the brush. I didn't really clean it. And then we'll come right at the top of this and pull it. Pull it just, what that does, it breaks that edge and it feels more like the water is continuing to flow down below. Okay, I have another color that I think is very pretty. And this is uh, phthalo green and white. It is three parts white and one phthalo green. Look at that color. I love this phthalo green. It is so usable. I'm going to use this for accents. We'll put some in here, just a little bit. And these are more or less put on and left without blending. Take another one, and I'm just taking the corner of the brush as I do this. You find places that you think are too much all the same color, and then you just add a little bit of that turquoise. Boom, in there, and then we'll have one right in here. But I think what I'll do there, let's go, let's go ahead with, uh, this is Tinted Magic White, and I'm going to put just a, what I want to do is lighten it just a little bit. I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to use Pure White. Clean the brush, Pure White, and this is my turquoise little bit lighter than we've been using. So that makes it about uh, four, five white and one green. Right there. See, that, that is an important spot because again, you're looking at the cloud against the wave and the green against the dark that is right there. 
And of course, that's, those, are just, um, those are just stage lights because here you have the strength. That's where we want the strength. I'm going to do one other thing on that wave, and I think this is very helpful to you. I put the big light on the wave, but this is a three-story building. This is an upper deck. Okay, see this big wave? Okay, now let's come down to another row. And notice how much less I'm using this time than I did the first time up there. And then if there's enough space between there and there, we'll come down and have another row. So you have three-story building and you have one big powerful wave. We may want to put just a little bit of that green color in there too because that'll give us a little bit of a eye, a little bit of an eye color, so the turquoise look. And when I did that, let's see, which one did I use? So I just used the regular turquoise and white. So it's the three white and one turquoise. And that's a very nice color for sort of thinning out the little area there. Do we need any more over here? I might suggest one last thing, and let's do this. Let's go ahead and take the knife, and we'll pick up, uh, this is a rock highlight color, and we'll put just a little extra white in it. And I want to put this on with a knife. So we'll put this right over in here. Where do we want that? Right, just a little bit of a gleam there. And let's take some of this and go out to the neighborhood. Oh, right out there. This first one, I'm gonna go back to the first one just a little bit, not quite as much, but just a teeny little bit. Let's, let's, take, uh, let's do the same thing with some of the foam. Let's take some of the gray foam so we get with a knife and just splash down a little bit there too. So your foam is really more important here than the highlight, but it's there. Okay, I think we've shown you how to do power C today. You have the big strength of the ocean meeting a rock. You have beautiful flat water back and forth, and then you have a, a big wave supporting it down below. I can take one more touch. If you need any little holes around there that you may not have, go ahead and do with that. It's been a great ball game. We came right down to the last inning, didn't we? But we got them. Thanks for being here.